Hey everyone, Riley here with Dark Arrow. We've been nearing completion on the Dark Arrow 1 prototype and recently we weighed the airplane as a nearly complete assembly. As you see it here, the airplane weighs around 715 pounds. I want to explain what that number means and also talk about how we achieved that weight. I also want to go over some of the weight reduction principles that we applied in the design process that might be helpful to you if you're someone designing a high performance vehicle. Let's get into it. We weighed the airplane by picking it up with a chain hoist and some straps wrapped around the fuselage and then we connected a load cell in series with our lifting hardware. This isn't really the standard method for measuring the empty weight on an airplane, so we're only using this as a reference measurement. The reason we did it this way is because we already had to suspend the airplane for a ground vibration test that we're setting up, so we figured it'd be easy enough to add in the load cell and grab an empty weight measurement while we're at it. As I mentioned before, the airplane weighs around 715 pounds as you see it here. If you've been following along, you already know that our target empty weight is around 750 pounds. So 715 is really good, right? Does that mean we're underweight? Well, no, we're not underweight because as you see it here, the airplane is incomplete. Probably the most obvious thing we're missing is the paint and the cowling and spinner. But beyond that, we're also missing some of the hardware for the main landing gear, the flap controls, the seat cushions, and some other miscellaneous hardware. Once we add everything in, the weight's going to go up quite a bit to around 780 to 790 pounds. So is that bad? Does that mean we're overweight? Well, we're not overweight either because with this being a prototype, we have some hardware installed that's test specific. There's a test fuel tank in the co-pilot seat right now that added around 15 to 20 pounds right there. We also changed to a constant speed prop that added around another 20 to 25 pounds on top of the fixed pitch prop we were originally tending to fly with. There's also some hardware firewall forward that we're gonna refine to more lightweight versions once we test and better understand how we wanna refine and configure things once we get into production. So with all that in mind, I'd say the airplane is essentially on target for the empty weight. So what do all these numbers mean? How does the weight of our aircraft compare to other small aircraft? In the realm of fast two-seaters, our airplane's actually pretty light, but it's definitely not the lightest. What's unique about our airplane is that it's light while still maintaining an appreciable amount of horsepower. It's that combination of weight and power that's difficult to achieve. Based off some of the questions and comments we get, it seems there's this idea floating around that there's like a fundamental limit for weight and power and we might be violating that limit somehow, and that's not really the case. I have a graph I want to show that I think will better illustrate this point. This is a plot of power versus empty weight for several popular two-seat kit aircraft roughly similar to ours. The general trend here is more engine power results in a heavier airplane. We can even draw a best fit line through these points and see that the trend is fairly linear. The line is really what I want to focus on with this graph. It somewhat represents the average of what the aviation industry can achieve based on existing tools, materials, and technology. In the time of the Wright brothers, the slope of this line would have been pretty shallow since technologies were more primitive then. But as aviation advanced, engines got more powerful, airframes became lighter, and the line got steeper. Falling below the line here means that there's opportunity for improvement in terms of weight reduction or an increase in engine power. Landing above the line indicates a further level of optimization in the design or basically being closer to the limits of what is possible given the latest technology. The Dark Arrow 1 lands above the line in this graph, but the line of industry average here is based on designs and technologies that are several decades old now. We didn't break any fundamental laws of physics with the Dark Arrow 1, it's just that technology has gotten better, which allows airplanes to get better too. Or at least that's what we set out to prove. I would say we can actually build our airplane even lighter with even more power, but I'll save that discussion for a future video. For now, I just want to go through some of the principles we applied to get the Dark Arrow 1 to this point in terms of weight and power. One of the main reasons that the Dark Arrow 1 is light is just that it's small. I know this seems simple and obvious, but I think it gets overlooked. In general, small airplanes weigh less than big airplanes, so if you're trying to keep things light, a simple solution is just to build things small. There are limitations to this approach though. We wanted our airplane to carry two people and their luggage so that automatically placed some constraints on the cabin size for our aircraft. However, we were still able to make the most minimalistic airframe that we could around that cabin size constraint. Building the airframe any larger than necessary just would have meant more mass and more airframe that we have to drag through the air. Another big reason that our airplane is light is that the engine is light. 
This engine weighs about 50 to 70 pounds less than traditional aircraft engines that produce a similar amount of power. The engine forms a large portion of the total aircraft mass, so engine selection has a big impact on the empty weight of the airplane. An easy pitfall when selecting an engine is to only look at the power output of the engine and then not fully consider the weight of the engine or what impact that will have on the weight of the rest of the aircraft. If we're designing an airplane from scratch, we have the ability to optimize the aircraft around the engine. A heavy engine is going to also require a stronger, heavier airframe to support it. It's also going to need a bigger wing to lift it. That bigger wing is then going to need a bigger tail to maintain stability and then the whole aircraft is going to require stronger, heavier landing gear to land on. So you can see that the selection of a heavy engine is going to extend and multiply across the rest of the aircraft. On the other hand, the selection of a light engine is a really easy win for weight reduction. It's not difficult to find a light engine, but what we wanted was a light engine that still had a decent amount of power. So an engine with a high power to weight ratio. You can take this a step further and look at the amount of fuel that the engine will burn over a given mission. We did find engines that had a better power to weight ratio than this engine based off the weight of the engine alone. I'm talking about small turboprop engines. But then when you look at the massive amount of fuel that these engines burn to fly a long range mission like we're targeting, the weight of everything starts to tip back in favor of this engine. Once we picked this engine, there were a couple ways that we built the airplane specifically for this engine. If you look firewall forward, you can't see it, we don't have it installed, but the cowling fits the engine pretty tightly. And then we also built a pretty minimalistic engine mount and firewall. We also tied some of the nose landing gear structure into the engine mount to integrate structures and eliminate additional hard points. The basic principle here is if you're trying to reduce weight, you want to consolidate everything into tighter packages, integrate structures and systems where possible, and completely eliminate hardware if you can. There were a couple other areas in the airplane where we applied this philosophy. If you look at the wing on our airplane, it's built in one large piece rather than being broken up into a couple sections like you normally see in light aircraft. If you're trying to reduce weight, it doesn't really make sense to build the most heavily loaded structure in the airplane in multiple sections and then join those sections together with pins or bolted joints. Joints require additional hardware and they also act as stress concentrations that need additional reinforcement structure. It's just lighter and more structurally efficient to build the wing in one large piece. Another reason that our airplane is light is that the airframe or the basic structure of the aircraft is built from light material. More specifically, carbon fiber composite. Carbon fiber is light, but it's also strong and stiff, which ends up being a double win for weight savings. For example, say you had two parts that were the exact same size and shape, one made from aluminum and one made from carbon fiber. The carbon fiber part is going to end up being over 40% lighter than the aluminum part, just because carbon fiber is a lower density material. But because carbon fiber is stronger and stiffer than aluminum, we can oftentimes get away with using less material and get an added weight savings. It's not enough to just throw carbon fiber at the problem and assume things will be light though. Carbon fiber doesn't automatically make parts light. Composite structures need to be designed and manufactured correctly. So you need to pick the right fiber and the right resin. The fiber needs to be oriented correctly and stacked in the right sequence. And then you need to pick a manufacturing process that's appropriate for the application. We use a process called infusion to make all our carbon fiber parts and it allows us to get a really good fiber to resin ratio so that we don't have extra resin in our structure adding extra weight. The infusion process that I mentioned allows us to achieve a good surface finish on our parts. Getting a good surface finish is important along with achieving dimensional accuracy. Otherwise you have to add a bunch of filler material to the surface of your part and then sand it down to final contour to get your desired geometry and surface finish. All this extra filler material adds weight. The way around that is to build precise, dimensionally accurate parts using precise, dimensionally accurate molds. The standard approach there is to build your molds using computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing tools, or just CAD CAM tools for short. There are a lot of options here, but we used Onshape as our design tool to 3D model the entire Dark Air One airframe. We also modeled all the molds and mold patterns we needed to build. Between modeling the airframe, the airframe molds, and the patterns to make the molds, and the stock to make the patterns, it can get to be a lot of part files, but what's cool about Onshape is it has functionality built right into it to make it easy to handle a lot of different part files. After we had all the CAD models we needed, we were able to use them to create CNC machine molds and patterns, which we ultimately used to ensure dimensional accuracy and a good surface finish on our parts. If you want to use similar methods on a project you're working on, you can start using Onshape for free by clicking the link in the description of this video. 
Full disclosure, we do have a brand relationship with Onshape, but honestly, we'd already been using and recommending their software for years before any of that came about. We use computer-aided design and manufacturing to unlock another weight savings method, which is quick iteration. Anytime you design something new, it's unlikely you'll come up with a fully optimized solution on your first try. So it's important to design in a way that allows you to quickly and easily iterate on things to refine your design, especially if you're trying to save weight. We used our CNC equipment to build certain parts of the internal structure on our aircraft in a way that allowed quick iteration. Most of the internal structure is built from CNC cut sandwich panel structures like this. The important thing with this approach is it allows us to build new parts without having to build new molds. So all we have to do is update our design and on shape, update our machining tool paths, and then we can cut out a new part that's better optimized. We had a couple areas in the prototype where we iterated on things to reduce weight, and then after we built the prototype, we identified a couple more areas for refinement that we're gonna carry forward into production. This doesn't only work on 2D flat structures like this, we can also make folded three-dimensional structures like these exhaust tunnels. We cut these out in a flat 2D shape and then fold them and bond them into a three-dimensional structure like this. We kept the Dark Air One light by building it as a pretty minimalistic airplane. It's definitely not Cirrus, so there's no air conditioning, no anti-icing, no cabin pressurization, and it was originally intended to fly with a fixed pitch propeller. There's still a good amount of redundancy and capability built into the design. We still have dual ECUs, dual fuel pumps, dual ignition systems, redundant avionics, and even fully retractable landing gear. What becomes more and more of an issue as an airplane design gets lighter and lighter is that the weight of accessories can start to have a big impact on the empty weight of the aircraft. For example, the seat cushions in our airplane are custom fitted to the occupants and the weight of the two cushions can vary by as much as 10 pounds depending on the height of the pilot and co-pilot. The weight of instruments and avionics matters too. Most modern avionics are pretty light, but there still are a couple individual instruments that can weigh as much as 5 to 10 pounds each, so you definitely have to pay attention to this if you're building an overly complicated instrument panel. The weight of extra batteries and circuits and ECUs and fuel pumps can add up if you're building in redundancy, so you definitely have to pay attention to this. There is a way to manage all this though. One of the ways that we were able to maintain a level of redundancy in the design while still keeping things light was that we tracked part weights as we built the airplane. Early on in the project, we built a large spreadsheet of all the parts in the aircraft and then compiled the predicted weights for everything. As we built the airplane, we replaced the predicted weight numbers with actual measured numbers. We weighed everything, both the parts we purchased from suppliers and the parts we manufactured ourselves. We continually compared the measured part weights to the predicted part weights we were getting in Onshape to make sure we were staying on track and to further refine our predictions. It doesn't take long going through this feedback loop before the error between predicted and measured value starts to get small. The manufacturing process we use is extremely repeatable and predictable, so we can easily predict part weights in Onshape by looking at the volume and surface area and then confidently use these predicted part weights in other aspects of the design process. Pretty early in the project, we were able to predict and publish an empty weight for the aircraft based on the configuration we were planning to build. There's a lot of predictive power here, and the other benefit of weighing and tracking everything is that you can use your list of part weights as a ranking tool to figure out what to attack first if things do start to trend overweight. Basically, you look at the heavy stuff and try to reduce the weight there first because that's where you're going to have your biggest impact. If you follow the process of predicting part weights in CAD, building them, measuring their actual weight, and then seeing how these numbers impact the weight total for the aircraft, it starts to cultivate a mindset that weight matters, even if it seems small. A few grams on their own aren't really a problem, but a few grams added up on every single part of the aircraft can translate into a significant amount of weight. It's really easy to ignore a few grams here or there, but if you continually make a habit of it, it can really add up and ultimately rob the aircraft of useful load. The useful load on our airplane equates to how much people, cargo, and fuel the aircraft can carry, and we really wanted to maximize this number so we couldn't really ignore even the grams. Okay, those are all the principles I wanted to go over. I know this is a lot. Keep in mind that these don't only apply for building an aircraft. Maybe you're working on a drone or a solar car or a race car or a sailboat. 
whatever the high performance vehicle is, these principles still apply. The other thing to keep in mind is that we're not truly after weight reduction. What we really care about is better vehicle performance. So maybe that's flying higher, faster, or farther, or carrying a greater payload, or maybe just operating more efficiently. Whatever the performance metric is, the vehicle will almost always benefit from being lighter weight. As far as next steps on the aircraft, I mentioned earlier in the video that we didn't really use the correct method for measuring the empty weight. We still have to do that, so we're going to get some proper aircraft scales. We have those on order, and then we're going to do a true empty weight and weight and balance measurement before we go for our airworthiness certificate. Uh, that'll be for a future video. I think we're going to leave it here for now. Uh, so with that, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. That added around 25 to 30 pounds right there. Um, is that about right? 10 plus 2 gallons? No, it's probably about 15, 20 pounds. So we can easily predict part weights and on shape by looking at the volume and surface finish. So God, why do I keep seeing surface finish? We continually compared the part of what allowed us to maintain a level of redundancy in the in the in the in the in the, in the <laughs>